students. Uh, we know there's been an arrest after the Daily Express uncovered a chaos uh, plot for Remembrance Day itself. Tomorrow, Armistice Day, which is the 11th of November, we'll continue to be wearing our poppies then as well. And there is a, an organisation called Youth Demand, which have been involved with this. There's also uh, the fact that Palestine Action uh, has, now has a manual offering advice on buying sledgehammers, breaking into buildings. This is a hardline pro-Palestinian campaign group training members on how to create a cell using hostile tactics against British firms linked to the Israeli weapons industry. And we know that this, these same people would be disrupting uh, remembrance services as well. Now, Gary Mond is the chairman of the National Jewish Assembly. Gary, you're very welcome to the programme. Uh, as we reflect on, and indeed still have pictures uh, on our screen for those of us who are watching, uh, the, uh, as you know, the majority of people listen to this station, but some people watch as well, and you're very welcome to do so on YouTube or connected devices. But Gary, as we remember today, there are those who would disrupt and do much worse than that, Gary. Your reaction? Well, firstly, I want to give a shout out for the Association of Jewish Ex-Servicemen who will be having their own ceremony a week from today at Whitehall uh, in honour of uh, those Jewish uh, Britons who gave their lives for our country uh, in, in both the First and the Second World Wars. And a shout out too for my own father-in-law, Stanley Feynman, who's American and who fought for the uh, Americans fighting his way through France and Germany in 1944 to 45. Um, but yes, with regard to your question, it is absolutely appalling that there are certain groups who tend to want to support terrorist organisations who are rebelling against what is happening today and who wish to undermine what is happening today. And this sort of behaviour has got to be stopped. And I'm delighted that at least one arrest has been made. Yes, it is absolutely uh, horrendous that this is happening. And we know that it, it sort of just makes me a question, Gary, is, is nothing sacred, essentially, in, in, in all of this? If there are people who would disrupt, even as we remember our war dead? They have got a, a really serious problems themselves in the sense that they cannot appreciate the freedoms that all the British soldiers and Navy and Air Force fought for in the Second World War so that we could live in freedom and not under Adolf Hitler's oppression. You're absolutely right. And actually, when you're mentioning those Jewish uh, servicemen uh, who are being remembered next week, uh, that is perhaps a part of our history, Gary, that is not particularly well known. Could you just tell us a little bit about the huge contribution of Jewish people to the war effort and, uh, of course, in uh, helping the effort that, that liberated so many uh, Jewish people who managed to survive the war when six million of them, of course, were brutally de exterminated by Hitler? Yes. I would say that the, the Jewish contribution to the war I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I would differentiate it from the contribution of non-Jews from the war. It's just that we, as, as a religion uh, and for Jewish people in the UK, we feel we ought to have our own additional service uh, to just reinforce what has been happening today and express our complete support for what is happening today. And every year, uh, the Association of Jewish Sex Servicemen organises um, uh, a memorial at the, at the Cenotaph one week after the uh, the official event are you worried uh, that it will be targeted gary have you got mitigations and i hope it i really hope it isn't i hope it goes off without a hitch i hope there's no problem whatsoever but given the atmosphere that is around at the moment given the huge level of anti-semitism that is uh, being experienced by your community are you worried about what might happen have you mitigations in place well, in the past year, we've always been worried about all sorts of public events. I have every confidence that the security will be firm, will be rigorous and will be successful. So, yes, I'm worried, of course, but I do have confidence, uh, particularly in the CST, the Community Security Trust, who I'm sure will be active there, and in, other, and in the police and other security groups. This group, Palestine Action, clearly has taken a lot of what they would call direct action, which is just illegal, basically terrorist action. Uh, they broke as we they broke into the University of Manchester's chemistry building, the stool of bust of Jim Weissman, the first president of Israel. He'd been a lecturer, in fact, a very uh, eminent scientist in the University of Manchester in the early 1900s. Um, they said they posted pictures on social media showing the bust, uh, which had been beheaded. 
caption, first bust of Weizmann is dead, soon his Zionist project will be too. You must worry up the escalation here, especially in light of what had happened in Amsterdam this week as well to Jewish people there who were targeted because they were Jewish. Why hasn't such a group like that been banned already? Yeah. It's disgraceful that it has not been banned. And we're now starting to see some organisations around Europe, some uh, municipal authorities around Europe, doing a little bit about it. For example, a couple of days ago, there was the good news that uh, the municipal authorities in Berlin have banned the chant from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. And we want to start seeing a much more rigorous and thorough approach taken by the authorities in this country. And as I've said on your programme in the past, this has to lead to the banning of the so-called Palestinian flag. Well, thank you so much to everyone who's been in touch today. Uh, Pauline um, has an interesting point. She says, well, in sense this morning, when the lovely man who runs We Served, uh, well, I've interviewed him before, actually, uh, told us that EasyJet employ veterans as engineers because they are so well-trained, but the NHS don't take on highly trained nurses and other medics if they don't have a degree, says Pauline. Kim and Wheel says, um, oh, very kind, uh, Kim says, uh, saying I'm lovely and professional, I would be crying through those messages. Love your show. Kim, I, I, just, I, I just say it as a real privilege to present this programme. I say it's a real privilege that people share their thoughts with me and uh, let me know what's on their mind and whatever it is, let me know. 0344 499 1000 uh, text me at 722 like Kim did uh, with the word talk in your text and send me a voice note as well perhaps it's about Remembrance Day perhaps it's about what Gary Maund is talking about we'll talk to him again in a second and also uh, in just a minute as well we're going to be talking about the fact that uh, the government is giving £4 million uh, to food companies for research and development in, as to how um, food can be healthier I mean surely that's up to the multi-million pound companies themselves but we'll get into all of that let me know your thoughts So three. 444991000. Are you happy with your money being given to food companies to make food healthier? Maybe people should just make healthier choices. Uh, I <laughs> perhaps should tell myself that from time to time. Gary's still with us. Gary Mon, the chairman of the National Jewish Assembly. Gary, I wonder uh, with the changing political landscape that is happening, um, Donald Trump, of course, elected in America. Uh, we know that there will be changes in Middle Eastern policy, which I know is something you, uh, you uh, follow very, very closely, especially in relation to Israel. And I just wonder whether you're, you're happy with that victory this week, whether things you think could perhaps be changing for the better, especially given the horrendous anti-Semitism that has always been around but has been particularly bad in the last over a year. I'm absolutely delighted that Donald Trump won. Um, he was the man who, when he was president between 2017 and 2021, he actually recognised Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. He moved the American embassy there. He recognised Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. And I always knew that he would be very pro-Israel because there is a little-known picture in his office of, he, of uh, him with the officers of the Jewish National Fund, which I was a trustee of for 12 years. Uh, where he has he made a big charitable donation to the JNF. Um, so I'm very optimistic. And you're starting to see one or two little things happen. Did you notice a few days ago that Qatar have told Hamas they're no longer welcome there? Yeah, I did notice that. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's, that's quite a significant development, really, isn't it? Yes, yes. I think there will be probably far less in the way of negotiations with Hamas and much more in terms of defeating Hamas, wiping them out and rescuing the hostages, because that's the only way this, this is going to conclude. I also think we're going to see an end to the Lebanon war in the near future, and I think that Hezbollah will be wiped out. Because of the Israeli military strength, you think? And, and what about America's role within that as well? Because there, has been, there have been some mixed signals, certainly from Biden and indeed Kamala Harris as vice president. I think Hezbollah will be wiped out largely because of Israeli strength, but also there will become a far more sympathetic attitude from outside Israel and a greater degree of understanding of what Israel is actually doing. Yeah. Um, Gary, I just, I mean, we've talked about those uh, potential protests a little bit earlier in terms of remembrance uh, events. And I just want to ask our callers and, and our audience what they think of this, because um, I just think it's absolutely horrendous. And especially on the day that it is to be even thinking about protesting on these pro-Palestinian protesters, Just Stop Oil are involved as well. Let us know your thoughts. So 0344-499-1000 is the number to give me a ring on. And Gary, we're, we're, we're seeing they're charged at national rate, those calls. I've got to say that once now. Um, we can see still the cenotaph and what is happening there. And on this incredibly solemn day, Gary, there are, as you say, some people who would uh, disrupt that and disrupt what's happening tomorrow. And we need to remain very vigilant about that. We do. 
I think that there is, to some extent, they want to try and make a name for themselves. Yeah. Some kind of rallying call for for the Jew haters. That that is essentially their objective. Uh, and the more outrageous their behaviour can be in any way, this method or any other method, then that's what they actually want to do, and they have to be stopped. Why do they feel so emboldened, Gary? I'm sorry, one of the things... Well, why do they feel so emboldened? I mean, I, I, I know it's always... Largely because of the two-tier policing, two-tier judicial uh, behaviour, uh, and a generally a way whereby uh, the Jewish community seem at present to be kind of relegated in the eyes of authority and not treated the same way uh, that, uh, for example, the alleged far-right demonstrations were a few weeks ago, where we saw a man sent to jail for a long period of time for a relatively minor offence. Mm. OK, Gary, thanks for your perspective on that. Uh, Gary uh, is chairman of the National Jewish Assembly. Gary Mond there, thank you to him.